would you define a ghost, and do you believe in them? My definition of a ghost is perhaps the same as everybody else's. The idea that some part of a person's personality or soul hangs around after they've died and is perhaps perceptible to living people. Uh, I don't myself actually believe in ghosts. What interests me about the idea of a ghost is that it is so analogous to a, to a very, very tangible memory, often with a will of its own. And that's kind of interesting to me. Have you ever had a paranormal experience? Um, I have never had an experience that could really be described as paranormal. What is your favorite ghost story? I think my all-time favorite ghost story is probably Beloved by Toni Morrison. That's just such a forceful, amazing, just super powerful, and I don't know, just everything about it is just the consummate ghost story. So, so wonderful. Um, a close second is probably um, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, which is intense and powerful for entirely different reasons, but uh, both of them pack a very strong psychological and spiritual and historical wallop. Do you feel that there are any essential elements to the genre? The defining elements of a ghost story are probably that it somehow involve some lingering trace of someone who's died that for reasons of its own is hanging around and either trying to get something done or trying to communicate with a living person or just hanging in there and nobody knows why but there's it's it's that sense of uh, someone refusing to go or just continuing to exist in the world for for either very good reasons or no good reason at all. Much of your early body of work drew heavily on symbolism related to spiritualism, death, the body, dreams, transformation, and magic. In an increasingly secular world, how do we reconnect with the spiritual without religion? I think the spiritual is innate in sentient beings, and religion is something we invented to channel that feeling and work with it and manifest it in the world. I think, I think religion is a language we have for imagining and having ideas about those feelings. So I think that religion is interesting, but if there weren't any religions, that feeling would still be with us. Your second novel, Her Fearful Symmetry, is a ghost story set in a flat next to Highgate Cemetery in London. But originally the story was set in a different cemetery, namely Graceland Cemetery in Chicago. What made you decide to move the story to England, and what about Highgate in particular made it a compelling setting? When I first had the idea for Her Fearful Symmetry, it was a story about a man who can't leave his flat. And the next idea that I had about it was that there would be a young woman who visits him. And so I was busily imagining this apartment that uh, Martin would live in. And I was thinking about it being located near Graceland Cemetery and overlooking it and being able to see that out the window. Um, and originally I had no particular reason for that. It just, uh, it just seemed like an interesting thing to, to introduce into the eye line of somebody who's stuck at home. And um, Graceland is a really interesting Chicago cemetery. It's got famous architects. It's got just 
you know, really marvelous. Uh, it almost feels like a walled garden. It's a very beautiful and kind of small place. Um, but when I started thinking about the cemetery, it sort of it started to assume a more important role in in the story, and that got me thinking. Well, is this is this the coolest cemetery I know of? Because I'm kind of a cemetery tourist, and I thought actually the most intriguing cemetery I've ever been in was uh, Highgate in London because it's so overgrown and so mysterious and has just some very, very strange features. Um, the, the plan of Highgate and the, the way that all the different parts of it interact is really quite intriguing and, and being so overgrown makes it feel much more mysterious. And so I thought, well, you know, I, I should see I should see what I can do in the way of researching this. And when I started to research it, there wasn't much available. There's not much to read. There wasn't anything I could get my hands on, really. So I phoned up uh, the office and was put through to uh, Mrs. Pateman, who, after I explained what I wanted to do, she said, um, oh, my dear, I don't think that would be a very good idea. Which, of course, made me want to do it more. All of a sudden, I was on fire to, to locate this novel in London. And um, so I talked her into letting me come and meet her in person and uh, showed up trembling because she was really kind of a super forceful personality. And uh, anyway, by the end of that conversation, she uh, she basically said that I could hang around and kind of uh, study up, but that I wasn't to run around um, bothering other people, that I was entirely supposed to talk to her and, and, you know, she would teach me. And I was like, okay, you know, because there just wasn't, she was, she was sort of a living encyclopedia of the cemetery and there was no other way. And then we became friends, we became really good friends. And the more I, the more I got into it, the more I realized that it was going to be important to include Jean Pateman and the Friends of Highgate Cemetery in the book itself. And so then I had to ask her if she was willing to become a character. And I just thought, oh no, she's never going to go for this. There's no way. And I think she thought about it for about five minutes and she said yes. <laughs> and uh, she was, she was great. I mean, that whole, the book wouldn't have been what it was at all without Jean. How did you come to work on the Ghostly Anthology of Ghost Stories? So Ghostly is one of those rare projects that was offered to me kind of fully conceived. So uh, my editors at uh, Vintage UK wanted uh, an anthology of ghost stories and so they invited me. And the thing that was uh, especially intriguing to me kind of sealed the deal was that they said I could illustrate it and that I would be able to work with Suzanne Dean, um, the very great designer who designs for, uh, has been designing for years for Random House. So that was exciting and they had pre-selected a whole bunch of stories and I was invited to bring my favorites and so it's, it's kind of a, um, it was one of those things where I sat down and read the giant pile of stories that they had given me and then I was making my own selections and I started to look at what I had and realized that everything I was choosing involved at least one of three things which were houses, children, and cats. And so I thought, well that's great, you know, we'll have the houses, children, and cats anthology of ghost stories. So. It was enjoyable to choose, it was enjoyable to draw, and I had a great time working with Suzanne. And, um, you know, really, it was terrific from top to bottom. Uh, also, it was relatively quick because I didn't have to write anything. <laughs> uh, the the drawing of it was, was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, you, Ken, were a big help. 
<laughs> in the picture research, and uh, we we had a good time all around. Um, Are there any ghost stories you wanted to include in Ghostly that you didn't? As far as stories that I wanted to include and and didn't, um, I mean, there were just loads. You know, a lot of a lot of people who specialize in ghost stories. I could have happily chosen a zillion stories by Kelly Link, for example. Um, I I chose um, my all-time favorite, but my second favorite ghost story of hers is called Stone Animals, and the only reason that I didn't put in Stone Animals was probably that it's just a bit long for an anthology, but uh, I recommend that to everyone because it's a great story. Ghostly contains Secret Life of Cats, an illustrated story that you wrote originally published serially in the Chicago Tribune. The story was also adapted into comics by Eddie Campbell for Bizarre Romance. How do you feel that the story changed through adaptation in these different publications? When I originally wrote the story, I didn't have the Tribune in mind. I was just writing a story and it got kind of long. It's a bit long for a short story, but not long enough to be a novella. Um, the Chicago Tribune happened to ask if I had any ghost stories. And I gave them that and they said, oh yeah, that's a bit long for one day. So we'll, we'll serialize it across, I think it was five days. And so I drew some illustrations for it myself. They serialized it. That was fun because, you know, how often do you get to serialize something in a newspaper these days? In these days of shrinking newspapers. Um, somewhat later, it was included in Ghostly, and so I did a different illustration for that. And then um, when Eddie and I decided to collaborate on Bizarre Romance, um, that story, he, he was looking at all the different stories and sort of picking different modes of comics and illustration for each one, and he wanted to have a different style for each of them. And the illustration for that one was informed by old Reader's Digest condensed books. And I especially like that illustration that he did because it has kind of a, there's a very vintage feel to it. And um, both of the main characters in the story, uh, you can imagine Ruth, who's supposed to be a, a woman in her late 70s, probably being somebody who might have actually had Reader's Digest condensed books. But um, the, the thing that was kind of fun about having one story, being able to illustrate it twice myself and then having Eddie do it, um, is just seeing the, the difference in approach each time. Uh, it's something that I like myself. I like collecting the same book with different covers and you know, just watching different people tackle the same materials are always really interesting to me.